Well, briefly, tramline wheeling is uh, an, Im an important method of managing land on autumn cereals for applying our sprays in the autumn, but all, that also is a very vulnerable time of year. So we need to think carefully how we manage, how we manage the land. And on moderate slopes, um, they can, there can be an issue, a risk of soil compaction, surface runoff, uh, erosion, the loss of nitrogen, phosphorus, and surface applied plant protection products. So we've been looking at practical ways of minimizing that risk, cost effective ways. Uh, the solutions that we've evaluated include the use of low ground pressure tyres, um, in this particular example the Michelin Zeo bib. So we're looking at specifically specific uh, tyres that have been designed to run at maybe half the ground pressure of a normal tyre. They work very effectively, reduce the compaction by distributing the same axle weight over a larger area um, and providing uh, stronger sidewalls to the tyre, so that's worked well. And the use of the Simba rotary harrow device, not yet on the market, um, but that creates little, little puncture holes, little perforations that help the water to infiltrate back into the crop, back into the soil, stop it ponding on the surface. And both of those approaches work very well at reducing um, the risk of, of compaction and runoff. There are other things, moving to wider spacing of tram lines with bigger kit can help. And, and most importantly, very careful timing of the autumn spray operation, getting it right. Uh, if, you, if you're able to go on drier soil, drier soil is structurally much stronger, able to withstand the weight, and therefore there's much less risk of compaction in the first place. So getting the timing right for autumn spray, which can be very difficult in this wet weather we've been having, but that's very important too. First of all, we, we, we investigated where the water um, was coming from that was leaving the field in a typical field of winter cereals. Most of the loss was down the tramline wheeling. So they're the bare areas that we leave for spray operations as bout markers. Uh, and we, we, the rest of the field is drilled. and We leave these, these bare areas every 24 meters or so. And then we go in with our drill. Um, we go in with our spray and we spray, spray in those areas. So those, those areas are bare, the only bit of the field that is. Um, and they're trafficked. So we wanted to try and think about what we could do to minimise that, uh, that compaction problem. Um, the compaction as an issue, it compacts the soil, it's squeezing the air out of the soil so you get reduced infiltration of water, um, so the water hasn't got anywhere to go and there's an increasing risk of runoff and that's where the problem comes from. So the first solution would be to think about using low ground pressure tyres. So we, these are specially designed tyres that have a, a stronger side wall that can withstand uh, the same axle pressure, the same axle weight, but at a lower pressure. So we might be running at perhaps six or seven PSI, whereas in a conventional tyre, we might be running at more like 20 PSI. And the research has shown that that can work really effectively. We've looked at four different sites, Scotland, uh, up in Dundee, also over down in Herefordshire, in Shropshire, and over in Leicestershire, different soil types and, and slope angles. Um, relatively moderate slopes can still be a problem. We've looked at loamy sands, silty clay loams, uh, and clay soils. And on all of those sites, we can see we can still have problems uh, that we can, uh, can do something about. Uh, so it's, it's not soil type specific, and it's not necessarily needing a steep slope to have a problem. Um, so as well as the low, low ground pressure tyres that can, can help, there are other novel solutions. We can think about uh, a new piece of kit that Simba have been developing. It's a rotary harrow unit. It attaches to the back of the rear wheel of the trail sprayer and just creates little pock marks, little diagonal pock marks that don't affect trafficability but help the water to infiltrate uh, and move back into the crop, back into the soil and stop it ponding into a sort of porridge on the surface at, at which point it affects your trafficability uh, and increases the risk of runoff. There's another solution which is a, a, a surface profiler by a chap called Charles Craig. Um, that's also novel, not on the market yet, but works surprisingly well. Uh, the downside with that is it, it does require, in the case of cereals, a separate pass because it has higher draft requirements. Um, works particularly well though in potatoes, uh, so where we also have compaction issues, probably more so than cereals in fact. Uh, so it's horses for courses, but in cereals, yes, yeah, certainly a piece of kit like this uh, can work very effectively. So talking about costs and benefits of these different approaches, the low ground pressure tyres do cost a little bit more to buy in the first place. And if we work that out on say a 200 hectare farm, it might be four pounds per hectare, something like that. But we can offset that with the fact that we get a greater life. They typically run for maybe four and a half thousand hours, whereas a typical tyre might be more like 2,000 hours, two and a half thousand hours. So we've got a greater life uh, for, our, for our money. And also there's reported to be a rather greater fuel efficiency for the low ground pressure tyres, about 15% fuel efficiency. And those two things together, together with the, the more flexible ability to get on the land, um, give us really a, 
a net, a net benefit, um, certainly not a cost. So there's good practical agronomic reasons why, why we would uh, advocate the use of low ground pressure tyres. If we compare that with the costs of the other equipment I mentioned, the Simbo Rotary Harrow device, not yet on the market, similar sort of costs, about £4 per hectare. Uh, it has the advantage that it can be used at the same time as we do our autumn spray operation, so it doesn't require any extra operation or any extra pass, and you can use the same sprayer speeds you would normally do, so there's no effect on, uh, on the ability to do the job, so there's no effect on draft requirements uh, or fuel use. And so, uh, so it's purely a, a small additional cost of, uh, of, of buying the kit in the first place. Uh, speed is not, is not affected, um, spray speed.